Dr. Ken Hermann, who's here from UCLA. We're really honored to have him. He's a nuclear medicine physician who is one of the people who was instrumental in setting up the Gallium-68 Dotatate imaging program at UCLA. And as I mentioned in my talk earlier, I've worked with him extensively in Gallium-68 imaging. He's really one of the major authorities on this subject in the United States. And we're really very, very fortunate to have him here to talk to us. Thank you. So, dear Ed, thank you very much for the kind introduction, and uh, I really have to say that I'm very impressed with this audience. So I just said in the break that I'm used scientific talks in front of 10, 15, if I'm lucky, 20 people, but to have a room like this is something really, really impressive. So thanks everyone for organizing this. These are my disclosures, and I think the most important one is the one down here. I'm originally from Germany, so please apologize my accent. And if you have questions, just interrupt me. I'm used to that. My talk is divided into five parts. First of all, I'm going to give a little bit of background information again, even so it's partially redundant, about the target and the mechanism of the gallium imaging and the PRT. In the second part, I think it's a very important question to this audience. Where are we with the gallium scan in the US? A very similar question also applies to PRT. If I have enough time, I will shortly strive an, an outlook, and then also shortly present uh, the UCLA net team, which we try to copycat a little bit the multiple scenario set up here at CEDARS. So there's a rising incidence of neuroendocrine tumors, and the good thing about these neuroendocrine tumors, if they are well differentiated, is, is that they express the somatostatin receptor too. And as previously shown by others, this is a very promising target for imaging, but also for therapy. To explain patients how this works, I always like to refer to the LIGO principle, which some of you might know who have children and, and grandchildren, is that you have to combine certain parts together. And uh, one of the most important parts is the target. In blue, and this, sorry, the target in blue here, and, uh, and this is a somatostatin 2 receptor, as com compared here. Then we need a ligand, which nicely and selectively and uh, binds very well to this target. And then we want to combine this to a radionuclide to either perform imaging or therapy. And in the example of the neonocrine tumor, I already showed here, this is a target somatostatin 2 receptor. One of these excellent bindings, uh, ligands, which is really binding to somatostatin 2 receptor is octrotate. And next step is we have to link it. So here is a chelator, the dota, and the dota allows to link the octrotate with the radionuclide, either gallium-68 for PET imaging or lutetium-177 for therapy. And to explain dodatate, dodatate is actually a combination of, it's actually the combination of the linker and the ligand, together dodatate. And this also now explains why this substance is called 170, 177 lutetium dodatate, because it's a combination for therapy of the radioactivity plus the linker and the ligand. And the same appears to gallium-68 if it's used for imaging. Now, how does it work? Uh, both for the PET scan as well as for the therapy, you get an IV injection. The substance travels through the body. And as previously said, these tumors express very nicely the somatostatin receptors. There are five different somatostatin receptors, but the most important one is the somatostatin receptor 2. It's extracellulary, so we can really nicely uh, bind to it via the blood. And what happens then is the ligand binds to the receptor, gets incorporated into the cell via early endosomes, and then later on there is a dissociation of the ligand and the receptor, and the radioactivity stays in the cell, in the somatostatin 2 receptor expressing cell, with the consequence that we can either, once it's gallium-68, perform a PET scan, or if it's lutetium-177, we have a therapeutic effect in the somatostatin-2 expressing cell. Here's an example for, for PET-CT imaging, and I will uh, walk you through. This is a maximum intensity projection. You can see here some physiological uptake in the spleen or in the liver, as well as in the kidneys. But you can nicely see that here are focal dots which are not 
seen on both sides, which are not symmetrical. And these are actually very small, but somatostatin two expressing bone metastases, which are pretty much impossible to be either seen on the octotate scan, on a CT, or even on MI. If we perform a therapy and we use OTC-177, we have the advantage that this is actually a radioactivity or a radionuclide which has a beta and a gamma component. The beta minus is the one which makes a therapy, but the gamma component can be used for imaging. So if we perform a therapy, we can actually, after a few hours or even after up to a few days, perform a SPECT CT scan, and we can see really where we deposited the radioactivity. And here's an example of a patient again. And you can see the physiologic uptake in the spleen as well as in the liver. But you can also nicely see here there are a couple of focal uptakes which do not belong there. And this actually are bone or lung metastasis. And also for the liver, if you perform a SPECT CT, you can also see that here the uptake in the, in the liver is not homogeneously. You see focal uptake. And in this case, it's indeed a patient who had liver metastasis. And the liver metastasis have a much higher uptake than the surrounding physiologic uptake. So we do not only treat the bone and lung lesions, but we also hit the liver lesions with this PRD treatment. The second part now is, where are we with the gallium donatate in the US? And uh, what I always said before June, so really until recently was, it's absolutely standard of care in Europe. It's implemented in all the guidelines, and we use it on a daily basis. Whereas in the US, it's not FDA approved, and it's only available in a few centers, but we are working on it to get it FDA approved. Now I want to point out this was before June 1st. Now it's June 25th, and I'm very proud and happy to show the next slide, because since June 1st, this is not true anymore, and gallium doratate is FDA approved. And I copied here, yeah, it's worth an applause. And I copied here the label from the homepage from AAA, and it says, for localization of somatostatin receptor positive neonicrine tumors in adult and pediatric patients. Why is this important? This is important for two things. Number one, which is amazing, it's for adults and kids. So we can use it for adults and kids. The second thing is, there is no label next to it which says only in midgut tumors, only in pancreatic nets, or for example, only in lung nets. No. The label is in somatostatin receptor positive tumors. So we can now perform the scan in as many times as we want to in patients who have a somatostatin 2 receptor positive tumor. I think this is very, 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 very amazing. However, one very important question for patients, of course, is how is the reimbursement? And according to, uh, to AAA, the reimbursement is not in place yet. It's going to be anticipated uh, to the end of 2016. All these dates are only anticipated dates. These are no promises. But, and this is also very important, is we have the possibility to keep our INDs open. There are a couple of INDs in the US, and so we are still able to offer the scan, even so it's not reimbursed yet. So what is the situation about PRT? Well, the therapy is not the new as we, as we think of. It's actually that the first patient was treated already 20 years ago in Switzerland, back then with the ITU-19 labeled somatostatin 2 receptor agonist. Since then, at least in Europe, Itrium-90 and Lutetium-177, Dolatate and Dolatoc are clinically established and are pretty much standard of care. And uh, this is also documented in the recent update of the ESMO guidelines by Kiel Olberg, where it's really now uh, mentioned as a very uh, appropriate part in the clinical management. However, one of the big downsides always was that there is a lack of randomized clinical trials. And I put this in red, and I'm not going to go into details because I know Andrew is coming afterwards. It's going to, to mention this in much more detail. But this is also the second big milestone. Why I'm very optimistic, as uh, Dr. Wolin has shown before, that we will be able to offer PRT in the US quite soon. How does it work if you prepare a patient for, for PRT? Well, first of all, we have to confirm the somatostatin 2 receptor expression. Uh, not only in the histopathology, but also afterwards in the progressing lesions. This most likely, and I agree with Dr. Wolin, uh, can be done with octreotate scan, also with dolatate PET-CT, but I also believe in this that this is old technology, the octreotate, and the future is clearly the gallium dolatate PET-CT scan. Here's another example of a patient. 
uh, just for comparison reasons, again, this is a spleen, this is a liver, these are the kidneys, all physiologic uptake. But here in this patient, we nicely see two liver lesions as well as another lesion here. And this becomes more obvious if you look in the uh, corresponding transaxial slides. These are the two liver metastases. And this scan was necessary to really confirm that the patient where he's having progressing uh, disease is expressing the somatostatin 2 receptor. Next step is we have to test the blood values, thrombocytes, etc., and we have to test the kidney function because the kidney is one of the organs at risk. And we, of course, consult the patient to explain the procedure, to explain side effects and uh, everything around this, which is usually around an hour. Then we perform the PRT, which is an outpatient procedure here in the U.S. The length of the visit is around eight to nine hours. The patient comes to us, we talk to him, we welcome him, we uh, put him into a dedicated room. Then the first thing is after putting an IV, uh, we, we start with the kidney protection. It's a collection of uh, 25 uh, amino acids and uh, this infusion takes over four hours. After around half an hour, we start with the therapy, the PRT therapy, it's an infusion, only 30 minutes. And then six hours after the PRT, we perform blood tests again to check out uh, the, the, the blood values. Most important is we look to the potassium because in some of the studies published, there have been an increase of potassium being reported. Then after every cycle, because we can perform up to four cycles, we do repetitive blood tests and a kidney function evaluation to make sure that the kidney is still doing okay. And of course, we perform restaging depending on the setup after two, sometimes after three or after four cycles. And uh, I personally also prefer to do the dollar tape PET-CT again. And this another patient, uh, or it's actually the same patient undergoing uh, with, the two, with the two liver metastases, undergoing four cycles of PRT. And you can nicely see that this big lesion here has almost vanished. The small lesion has also decreased, is still there. So this is, the first of all, a patient who has shown no, decrease prog uh, no disease progression in four cycles. He's actually shown partial remission. And uh, this is a patient from Europe. Uh, we are not that there yet in the US, but actually this is a patient where we have in, in Europe not the limitation of only performing four cycles. It's a patient who continued to get PRT as he needed. And uh, even now, three, four years later, he's still alive, still not, has not progressed. Now, important question for you is, when is PRT available? At UCLA, also at other places. And there's always a short and a detailed answer. The short answer, it's actually now available for some patients. And uh, what does it mean? Well, as Dr. Wallen has shown, that uh, the AAA has filed an expanded access for mid-gut net tumors, which is pretty much the continuity of the NETA1 trial. We are expecting, and this is really, again, expectation, I hope that uh, we're going to treat the first patient in July at UCLA. And a uh, very important question is also, what are the costs? As part of this expanded access protocol, AAA is providing the medication actually for free, which is very good and very important. Uh, for the other costs, like nurses, there is going to be a cost recovery mechanism in place, and uh, which, to give you a ballpark number, at UCLA will be uh, less than $2,000 per cycle. And what is the future, especially for, for patients uh, who have no mid-gut uh, uh, neuroendocrine tumors? Uh, there is full FDA approval expected for the PRT and reimbursement pretty close afterwards, uh, according to AAA, end of 2016. And we all hope that this is not going to be only for Midgats. We hope that this is for uh, uh, yeah, a couple of other entities, gap nets, maybe even lung nets as well. A short outlook. I just want to show you that uh, PRT with somatostatin agonists is absolutely exciting, but there's more interesting things to come. One of them is the somatostatin 2 antagonists. They have a better binding than the agonists. I don't want to go too much into detail, but the main idea is that they not only create better images, but also more radiation to the tumor or less radiation to the healthy body. And one of the ideas is, is that they not only bind to the active receptors, but also to the inactive somatostatin 2 receptors. And just to show you that there's really also some scientific rational behind it, this is a study from Switzerland. They just performed uh, imaging. Uh, somatostatin agonist compared to a somatostatin antagonist. And just to show you, this is the same patient two days in between, and you can clearly see here more lesions on the antagonist compared to the agonist scan. And 
also from Switzerland, from the Damian Wild group. This is a patient who underwent, it was one of the first patients who underwent uh, somatostatin antagonist therapy. And you can see here that indeed there is a treatment response visible. According to clinicaltrials.gov, there is going to be a study for therapy with these antagonists. However, to my understanding, it's not yet recruiting. Last but not least, I want to introduce you to the UCLA NET team. Again, it's very important to emphasize that the neuroendocrine tumors and also PIT are things which are best done in a multidisciplinary setting. At uh, UCLA, we have a combination of people including gastroenterology, endocrinology, medical oncology, very important, of course, also surgery. And here, here at UCLA, the nuclear medicine, or what we call the diagnostics team, consists of me, but also two persons who are unfortunately not available today because uh, Dr. Fendler, who we recruited from Munich, uh, he gave, or actually his wife gave birth to a son early this morning. So he's, uh, yeah, it's okay that he's not here. And uh, my boss is also not here, so the boss always has the right not to come. <laughs> what I want to show you is that we really have a quite, uh, quite a good group. Uh, we are also working very close together with uh, people from Cedars. And, and, and I also was very happy that uh, Dr. Wohl introduced me because very often, uh, because I've done a lot of PRT patients in Europe, I've done not a single one yet in the US. And, and Dr. Wohl is one of the ones who really has already experienced with, even with the American amino acid cocktail. So uh, if patients ask me things and I don't know what to do, I, it can happen that I call Dr. Wohl and ask, so what, what is your personal experience? And this is one of the advantages I think we have in neuroendocrine tumors. It's a, it's a rare tumor, it's a small field, we pretty much know all each other, and it's actually very much fun to work in this group. And last but not least, uh, if you are interested in getting access to the UCLA and NET team, these Lauren and Tinesha are the persons you can reach. This are the course, sorry. This is the corresponding phone number, and uh, since last Monday we finally even have a homepage. Thank you very much for your time.